stuff, and I'll put a bit of coffee on it, and I want to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. It'd be a short meeting if it didn't. Um, so thank you guys for getting up real early. Is this normally a 6.30, 7 o'clock Rotary? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get ahead of it? Yeah. Right. We <laughs> did this for John. So most of you probably haven't been here before. Dave Paul is absolutely familiar with uh, my generation, the generation before me. Um, but we are we are now Hawks Green and Resort, and for the first 120 years we were at Hawks Green. Um, but uh, we we undertook a develop, redevelopment, as you can see, and so uh, we'll go through a little bit of history and what you're seeing. So we're obviously on the banks of the St. Lawrence River, and uh, and have been since 1889. Uh, by by marriage, I guess I'm fourth generation. I married Heather Huck, and I bought her. Heather and I bought her dad about 30 years ago. I think that was uh, Jerry Huck. Um, and he had a brother, uh, has a brother, Morris, and Morris lives next door actually. And Jerry and Morris were the two instrumental in the third generation that uh, we were able to build on top of uh, starting about 30 years ago. So we'll go through a little bit of introduction. The vision, mi uh, vision mission, you know, core values, etc. We're not done. Uh, so obviously you, you know where we are. Um, the, the neat thing about Hux is uh, on the Canadian side, obviously we, can, we cater to Canadian voters, but we're in a bit of a unique position. Over, over certainly the last 50, 60 years, about 25% of everything we do is sold back to the U.S. That number lately has been closer to 40%. So uh, that would skew more towards some of those large boats in the showroom. Um, you know, we can absolutely play the economy a little bit. The American economy is much stronger at home from Tampa last night. And the American economy is doing just fine. Despite what they think, uh, middle class consumers in good shape, there's more wealth than there's ever, ever been. So luckily, those folks show up from all over the world. And, uh, you know, Orlando, Texas, California, and the stateside, and they play in the Thousand Islands. They're now rediscovering again Clayton, Alex Bay, and that community. Um, for us on our side, our side is much more personal. So the people we serve here, obviously Montreal or Montreal, but it's, it's uh, England, Hong Kong, Australia, obviously a large U.S. contingent. These people come in from somewhere in the world. They pretty much, pretty much own real estate, so they can have mainland or island real estate. They come for four, five, six, eight, ten weeks, and then they pack up and go home. And that's the typical customer we're serving when you see that, you know, that big stuff in the showroom. Now, sea dues, we were 33 years of sea dues, that's more of a local contingent. Boston Whaler would be a little bit more local. But it's it's amazing to people that live here when they find out when we do a push pin of where the home address for our customer is, it's local. So we, we live in one of the best, you guys may or may not know this, but one of the best freshwater boating destinations in the world. Yeah. We take it for granted, for some of us do sometimes. So. And then, um, in 2019, uh, a little bit more history. So Peter Johnston is my brother-in-law, and he was my business partner for 27 years. Um, and he, he had looked to get out a few years ago, so he'd been here longer than I was. He'd started in the 80s. And so we engineered a plan to, to have him sell the shares, and two other individuals come into the operation. A gentleman named Mark Dalton, who's an Ottawa-based builder, owns three building companies. And another gentleman, Nathan Chief, and he had just sold a company, a widget company, uh, for lots of dough. And both of those uh, people had been 20 plus year customers here, so they could see firsthand what we're up to. And Mark Dalton, actually, <coughs> he was the person who was to build our park store facility, that giant boat shed on the parkway. And he approached me and said, Hey, are you interested in a partner? Because like, you could see where we were going with it. And it was a natural fit. He knows how to build things. I, I kind of know the boat business a little bit. Uh, so obviously that, that's kind of our local region, if you will, <coughs> small um, villages around us. But again, most of our business is not predicated uh, locally. Now that said, these people show up and they become part of the local economy. You know, they buy real estate, they buy boats, services, restaurants. You know, more and more Toronto coming this way as Muskoka's and, and that drive becomes prohibitive. 
certainly they've gone to the courses over the years, but more and more of them are figuring out if they come three hours east, uh, they can skip you know, some of that hubbub. It used to be a little bit predicated on the pricing of real estate. That's not the case anymore, as we all know locally. Uh, we, we certainly, maybe not caught up in the Skokas, but we're right there behind in terms of our state budgets. So again, we, it started in 1889. If we go up to the top, we go to Fred Park. Fred Park um, was the first one to settle on a piece of land actually just adjacent to us in Rock Park. Come down one generation, you get to Ed Huck and Howard Huck, two brothers. Howard's Marine next door was the Howard Huck side, and Ed Huck Marine you know, is our side. And we continue on from there to uh, several boys, but two of them were Jerry and Morris were the primary that we then uh, built on top of. Uh, so what do we sell? What we sell, that, that image is kind of cool because it captures about everything that we do do right now. Uh, this is my boat here. It's a 30-year-old, 31 Tierra. Um, but we sell the new Tierra product, which is here, uh, Boston Whaler. Uh, Regal we added last year. Regal takes us from 20 up to 40, uh, two feet. So it's a pretty wide swath. They build runabouts. They build you know, what, what we would consider bow riders, that sort of thing. Boston Whaler, most people, I don't have to explain what a Boston Whaler is. Um, and then we have some other brands. We have Harris Pontoons we just added. And uh, we were seated. It was a big, big piece of our identity for 33 years. I gave that up last year uh, for a few reasons. But uh, So that's kind of the products. In each case, and we've got Rosser. In each case, uh, Boston Whaler Tierra uh, was Manitou. It's now Harris. Those are all Tier 1 products. So that's as high as you go in the industry for quality. And we've spent kind of 30 years climbing our way up to the point where we can sell tier one product. It's more expensive, no better, but they find ownership. But the big thing is that the manufacturers at tier one level, they support the product better. So when it breaks, we get the call and say, hey, it broke. And we fix it and got this customer up and running and we like to get paid. That's what happens when you deal with tier one stuff. Tier two and tier three look shiny in a boat show, but often isn't as well engineered. And when it does break, the company's not necessarily there to support in the same way as the and of those brands, Regal is a father-son team. We were Cobalt for 23 years. They were a father-son team. Uh, Tierra is, uh, is their generation. <coughs> these are private companies still held. And there's definitely an element to dealing with them. You, know, you pick up the phone, you talk to the founder or the, the, the guy that runs the company. Boston Whale or not, it's a large Brunswick brand, but we've had an excellent rapport with a senior leadership team there for years. Service. So service, uh, we've always had boat service. If you sell boats, you need to fix them. Um, but what happened is when we built Park Store, I don't know, six or seven years ago now, what we didn't really understand is that by filling that building, there's 85,000 feet of heated into our boats. By filling that building, we can do way more service in the off season, which is the right time of year. You don't want to fix a boat in season. You're supposed to be using it. You can't fix it in the spring because we're too busy launching 600 boats. You can't really fix it in the fall because we're too busy pulling them out and making sure they get winterized in time. So the right time here to fix and do preventative maintenance is in the winter. And Park Store allowed us to do that. And so we went from, for years, we bounced along between two and three techs. We've got eight techs now, plus we have three people of detail techs. And those detail techs do nothing but buff and wax and polish boats. Uh, five days a week, 40 hours a week, year round. Wow. They can do that because they're inside a building, a heated building. And they are out right now, their pipeline is out until first week of April. So we've sold detail services on all those boats till April already. Wow. We've got top, top business, canvas business, which Tommy Henderson still does for us. He's well in February, March on top business. You can't do that, pulling a boat out of a snow bank and putting it into a, you know, kind of a makeshift shop, which is what we had. We were in the old service department downstairs. It was a tin building with shrink wrap and insulation. We did our best to get it to 60 degrees. So what we didn't realize was the amount of, uh, of service. And then we sell 85 cents of parts to every dollar of service, give or take. I was just at Spader, and Spader's our performance group. So we meet three times a year in the US or here. And there's 20 of us. And we sit in a room, and we look at numbers and a book. We did that the last
last two days in, in Tampa, and that book comes every month, and there's every single ratio you can imagine the book is. So if I'm, you sell a dollar service, you know, what does the industry sell as parts to that service? Much like the automotive business. But again, by building heated storage, it increases storage revenue, it increases service revenue, it keeps your tech year round, and you sell more parts. If we go back 30 years, our techs were like, all right, we're done, it's October 15th, and I go ice fishing now, I want to be laid off. And the new techs are like, I have a mortgage, I got three kids, mm -hmm. I, I am not being laid off, or I'll, I'll leave and go to the automotive business. So we must retain people. So we, we have about 36 people year round, and another 10 uh, you know, in the summer, the gas lab, so. So there's 160-ish slips, I think at 180, it's reformatted, about 160. That's our, that's our dock infrastructure for, for gas dock and arrival for Cassie's and so on. But that's a sales dock, you know, or drop a boat off when you're coming in for service. And then pretty much every other dock that you see is uh, what we call a seasonal dock. So years ago, 30 years ago, we gave up on the transient business. That somebody shows up on their way from somewhere to somewhere and they want to stay the night. There's marinas that, that that's their purpose. And again, an operating municipal marina is supposed to be that. Other marinas, as you go up river, cater to that. Brockville, municipal marina, Brockville, that's its, that should be its purpose. People's taxes are paying for those slips to be you know, created and maintained so that tourist dollars come in. What does a power boater do? He walks around with a pocket full of money looking for a bar and restaurant. That's what they do. And that's what those slips <laughs> are supposed to be. And you watch, and I've been in arguments with the Gandakwe leadership over the long time years, but you know, they take and they build all these slips of public money and they go, you know, it'd be easier if we just rent it at once, go back from Ottawa. Stop with this transient thing. These people are paying the ass. And so you go to a marina and it's like, hey, we're a tourist, we want to come out, I'm sorry, we're full for the night. Well, they're full because many of them took the easy route and rented it to Ottawa or to somebody from somewhere once. And those people fill their cars up with groceries at home. They show up at their boat, they get on their boat, they go to an island. They're not leaving any money in the community. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we do that. We don't, we don't cater to the to transients, but the PECs do, and the Williams have a few, and the Gandalf Marine is 600 is so strong, I think. You know, that's kind of their purpose. This is Park Store, uh, Parkway Storage. It wasn't, wasn't a long drawn in think tank. It was 15 minutes. What are we going to call this thing? Well, it's on the Parkway and stores both, so it's Park Store. And it's stuck. Um, if, if you guys have time, I'm not sure what the agenda is, I can give you the nickel tour here. And then if you want, you know, on the, on the exit, we can get cars and go over and park and just go to the Park Store if anybody's interested. I have time to do that. And that's three, three buildings built over a probably a four or five year period, uh, each, each building. A uh, little bit of a different purpose, and I mean, it's easier to show you that. Than, we well, store cars too. We do store some cars, that was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and campers, you know, we were gonna do RVs and campers, and we do have some in there. What we quickly found is every one of those boats is a potential work order to keep our most techs busy and self-service parts, and buffing. Uh, Cars and campers is none of that revenue. So if we go and put the stuff in the building, we've now taken away, and I'm worried, you know, a car hard jacket with a big clunky zipper and a tech box by that Porsche, mm -hmm. and I'm into a you know, $30,000 paint job. Mm -hmm. So we've tailed back from the first couple of years, we've really tailed back. You can still leave an RV here if you have a boat with us. Same thing with a car, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to work my way over that. That was not out. And, and when we built the first building, uh, it was Peter and I at that time, we made a budget of X and we ran the modeling around where are we ever going to find boats to fill this boat? Who's going to pay us this much for the story? We ran modeling around 65% occupancy over the first three years and we hope to get to that. And it's like you do the math and we make a payment. I think we can cover a nut on this. Yeah, okay. First year, full. Wow. Okay, so let's try and build another one. You know. um, and they're not inexpensive in the racking. They're super insulated. So we built another one and he said, well, let's do the all on 50% because there's no world. We filled one up, let's not get cocky. At 50%, how many years before we think we can get the full occupancy? Second one was full before we built it. People put their hand on and said, I'll take spot. Third, you know, much the same thing. So we have plans for Park Store 4. We get into that a little bit. So how many goals do you store? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
We're about 600 boats in total. And I don't, but that's between here, the card store, and then for years and years we rented the uh, uh, Tom Henderson and Thomas lot at the corner of Reynolds Road and 400. If you go by on the way up the Rapid Valley, there's a big shrimp rack dome, and there's boats everywhere. That's us too. So, so the, the day compound boats go with a lesser work order attached. Inside heat is you'll see when we go to the building. There's buildings that have identifying tags that have active work orders. And you're in a building that's going to be crashed at some point this winter and work on Stuff that goes to Tommy is going to be more center consoles, more outboards, less active reporters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our vision is to be a first class destination delivering experiences beyond boating. In the beyond boating part, we're in the boat business. We are the service delivery business. That's what we do. But it goes beyond just selling a boat. It's, you know, the phone call, they're coming in from wherever. Landing the auto airport will send a car to go get them. If they need something at the dock, we'll put a kid in the boat, and run over to the dock, and deliver it. So it's kind of a concierge mentality. Whatever it is we need to do to make your time here more enjoyable, so you stay in Boeing, you know, that's our deal. And that can be anything. If one of the kids walk across the parking lot, you know, if they see somebody pulling out of the car and the trunk goes open, you get your ass over there and ask them to help you. We help with those groceries back to the boat. That, that sort of thing. That's the attitude that must prevail to enrich the lives of all who play good and work on the water. And that includes our employees. You know, if our employees are in a crappy mood, that all goes downhill. So they have to be happy to deliver a great experience. And we work pretty hard at that. And you're able to find people to do that. We are, yeah. 36 employees, we have very little turnover. We have people <coughs> in the summer to be part of that tank kid, gas stop and cash. Core values are excellence, integrity, teamwork, commitment, we're passionate, and we do put our people first. You know, their, their development, we're sending these eight techs are all over the place, they're in Atlanta, they're everywhere in a plane, learning the technology that's involved in some of that stuff. And when you go in the showroom, you'll see a, a 600 out, you know, horse outboard, two props of transmission in the middle, the outboard's $110,000 US, just the outboard. You know? But the diagnostics and the learning curve, we were the first in Canada to get 600s, Techs had to be trained in Atlanta to even receive the vote. Um, there's what's happening is the delta between staying current with all this technology, you've got to double down on your training and everything else, or you go the other way and it's you know somebody with a pickup truck and some wrenches. He's running out of stuff to fix. You know that stuff's getting older. as the new electronic. I mean, there's one tech here that does nothing with screens. He just does GPS. The, the technology on a new way over a Tierra is. Beyond, you can push a button. We leave here, push a button, put your finger on Kingston, and the boat will draw a line and then it will navigate. So it's even further than a car. You know, some cars can do that now, but you can push a button and it will take you through the reds and greens to Kingston and not run over. go back to Boeing. What's that? I can't go back to Boeing. No, no, no. got to figure out how to push a button. Actually, you know, he retired a few years ago. He had enough. Um, so then I spent the next three years asking him to board get. He board get. He's one of my best friends. You know, he's my wife's, my wife and uh, his wife are sisters. And finally, you know, we were in the like class and, and maybe you board get me. And so he's been working here full time again since uh, <laughs> last year. He's a delivery captain. He shows up on that really big, fancy stuff that pushes buttons. He shows people how to push the button. He spends a day with them. Uh, he does a bunch of stuff, so much stuff. So anyway, he's he's back at work in the summer um, and enjoying it, but the building is the Johnson building. And in, in here is this room, which we built during COVID. This whole building was built during COVID. And I do that as involved with the Rockwell Hospital for the last 12 years. All our hospital meetings were in here. The foundation work uh, because we were allowed in the hospital. So we put the masks on and did all our stuff here. Um, it also has what you see downstairs, we call the engine room, is where you walk in to write a work order. Lifelines is our gym. There's some really nice high end motors heads. We have a sauna, steam room, and then there's a laundry mat on the end for motors. That's a little bit of what's downstairs. Um, if are any of you are. Is that equipment? 
using for the use of who? It's, it's for the use of the slip, slip customers. Yeah, yeah. You have to be a marina slip customer, right? Or a, a slip customer. Or for the condos that we're yet to build, we start condos next September. Next oh, okay. And that's, so we're, we kind of built a neighborhood. We're slow learners. Normally you build the condos and you promise people a neighborhood and all this cool amenities that you buy the condo. We did it backwards. We built the neighborhood first and then we're going to go back in and backfill the condos. But if you're if you're a boater, the entire experience of a marina is judged when you walk in the hot water with the boater's head. And you know, I've, I've been doing this since I was 13 and I worked at Gordon's as a kid, Gordon Marine again, not quite before it became those character towers. And Mrs. Gordon was my first boss. I was at eighth grade summer. And she got down on her knees and she showed me how you clean a bathtub and how a washroom should look when, when you leave. And that stuck with me. And I've done a bunch of boating all over the place. And you go to those washrooms, you can tell whether the manager's paying attention or not. And so we started this building with the idea that we're going to build the nicest boaters heads anybody, any boater has ever, ever seen. You guys can be the judge when you look at them. And then the Gerald A. Chuck building, that's Jerry Huck. Uh, he was my father-in-law, he passed away Christmas Day last year. Um, and that building is, uh, is named after him. It's got center stage, which is the accessory store to the left, those are stand-up paddle boards. Cassie was his mother, um, and she ran a resort next door, a rental cottage resort with ten cabins. My wife currently runs Cassie's, which is now a, a coffee shop, sandwich and coffee shop. And then uh, I've got a crew that I work with over there in the center. And that's the center stage door. The door goes up, Jimmy Buffett comes on in the summer, there's lights and music. And, uh, and it just creates a fun atmosphere for the kids, you know, to work as well as, you know, the people coming in off the gas pipe. And then Cassie's we opened up a couple of years ago. Um, we, we, uh, my wife Heather was in healthcare most of her life and she was running a program called Thrive in Rockville. And, um, and she would travel a little bit to Smith Falls and some other area dealing with clients. And she was at a place in Smith Falls that was a great sandwich shop, a pickle pig, I think it was called. So when we built the restaurant, we equipped it, we spent the dough to buy all the good equipment, and we went to try and find third party to run it. Pickle pig ran it for the first year. And um, the owners were passionate, but then they sent down a crew that was not passionate. You know, they were half into it. To be fair, it was, it was the tail end of COVID, there was a bunch of that going on. Um, but I just listened to Heather every day, just complaining about how these people weren't doing it right. They can't make coffee, it was not, you know, they're not engaged. And I said, well, you do it. I'm sick of listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, fine. So the last couple of years she had, she went to coffee school in Ottawa, figured out how to be a barista, hired the right girls. Um, to run it with a big smile, and she makes really, really good sandwiches, and, and uh, it's been successful. Runs about 12 weeks a year, May long weekend to Labor Day. So that goes into the public? Day? Yeah, yeah. Lots of bicycle Hello. traffic. I'm Scott, together with Mark and Nathan, and the entire crew at Hux. We're excited to provide you with a brief glimpse of the culmination of 15 month endeavor that is the opening of the Gerald H. Huck Building, built on the original site that was at Huck Marine. The completion of this riverfront building reflects our continued investment to deliver a first-class experience to our customers and visitors and build on the successful foundation of the generations before us. On the first floor of the building, you'll find Center Stage, our new retail store offering loading apparel, water toys, provisions, and so much more, as well as offices for the sales, administration, and marketing team. Our new cafe is named after Cassie, Ed Hawk's wife, who served customers from all over the world at her scenic lodge tourist home while Ed grew the boat business. At Cassie's, you'll be treated to the delicious offerings from our partners, the Pickle Pig Market and Eatery, in a relaxing atmosphere with spectacular river views. <coughs> The second floor is home to our business and accounting offices and designed to highlight the view of the River Deuce. Come visit us as 
we continue to enrich the lives of all of those who live, work, and play on the water. At Hux, we look forward to taking your experience beyond that.
Mm -hmm. Bicycle crowd comes in, and beer apparently is a great energy food. Apparently, <laughs> 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 better take that. Yeah, about right. 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 So this will re we so regenerate. I mean, the White House we own this as well. Now we'll go away. That'll be phase two over here. Yeah. Um, we've been years, yeah. years, and three million dollars in. We're there, we got our, our, our pieces of paper 60 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, and the township's fine. At the end of the day, the townships, they want some revenue. There's 30 units going to pay for tax, some tax yeah. base, but it does take Rockport to the next level. And what we hear is, you know, the folks that are interested love the idea they can come from somewhere, park, they don't have to drive their car again for the rest of the weekend, they can walk the village. You know, there's a bit of a bug over there, it's yeah. an infrastructure. So, so just, uh, just on that, just a little bit further. So you in terms of infrastructure for those residents or, you know, temporary residents, uh, restaurants, stuff, stuff like that, do you have plans to try to increase the capacity of your restaurant or just rely on what's already in Rockport with core malls and all that? Sure. So, so certainly rely initially. Uh, Cassie's, Cassie's will probably get a piece of them. What wasn't in the image here is not a great image, but over here, this, this is an old image. What happens is this now becomes, <laughs> this becomes a pool, a general, like a, and, and the amenities building that uh, Cataraqui wouldn't let us put over here, they'll let us put here. So the amenities building and a pizza oven and a pool patio uh, would naturally expand, you know, a little bit of food offerings during the summer for the restaurant. But, and I think the condo people would probably, you know, get into the building of community people but are we going to be a full-fledged get your car and come here as a dinner venue? No, no. We're closed right now. I think the girls close at 3 in the afternoon. So it's breakfast and lunch, and we leave there. So you're open all the way around? The Cassie's are not open year-round. No, yeah, closed okay, that's later. Right. Okay. So it, it, it may, to that quick point, as people hang out a little longer, we'll probably have to extend hours a little bit. Okay. Later, those people okay. fall. That's the end of fall. You see Friday Harbor on the uh, Lake Simcoe? I mean, I grew up right near there. Yeah. Uh, and I, I visited there. I was blown away by what they've done there. And that's a little, you know, it's uh, you're kind of doing the same thing to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, much different boating and everything. But uh, that's a pretty amazing place, too. Where they, and they are so busy. I When I heard they were building it, I thought, wow, who's going to come? Yeah. The place is just blue. GTA. Cool. And yeah. you're, you're right about Florida. Half them are in Florida. Where are so if you grew up there, Lagoon City was the first to do that. Yeah, that's right, Lagoon City, but somehow Friday Harbor got my attention from Lagoon City. Right. I've, been, I've been to Lagoon City. Yeah, they were the early, early ones to try it they were. before their time. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, so the GTA just went <coughs> north and did the whole Friday Harbor yeah, thing. Yeah, Friday Harbor and Lagoon City. And then Maple Leaf Marinas, you know, has bought up all the assets. They've got 19 properties now up there, and some of them, the Bay Ports and some of those places, there is a development play. Lafroy, just south of where you were. Yeah, I know Lafroy. You know, they got a bunch of land. Stobles, Stobles had a bunch of land. They can so so you're going to see more and more marinas. You know, take some upland value out of the property. In the past, most of my colleagues have have sold out in states, and the developer shows up. The marina essentially goes away, and they take that land to a much higher purpose for a better yield. I'm super fortunate because we get to do both. We're going to get. You know, a bit of a land play next door, but it doesn't change what we do in the core of our business, which is to stick around and be focused. Scott, in 1889, what sort of business would the women uh, have done? Yeah, so 1889, there was a shot with the. Uh, yeah. That's when the boom ended in 1989. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Pardon me. <coughs> Oh, the shot with the, oh, it was in the video. Uh, it was in the video, and it was the it was the uh, homestead that was there up until about three years ago. And then Cassie's had ten cabins, and that was the dough. That was the money. Ed just came and played with boats. She ran the show. She drove the income. Um, but he had a long building that's on the site of the Gerald Huck building now, and it was a long shed, and they built wooden boats. And then uh, Fred and then. Uh, then Ed actually uh, was blacksmith, and he cast Invictus single and twin cylinder engines to power up the boat. 
We built the engines 100 years ago here to power the wood boats. Pretty incredible. He couldn't, there's a story where he couldn't, St. Lawrence engines wouldn't sell him or show him plans for the crane. He went to Syracuse and had an engineering company build him his crank for his fixed motors and then powered the boat down to St. Lawrence Marine to show them the <laughs> <laughs> um, So, so, but when, when we tore the house down, uh, it was difficult because, you know, there's four generations of family. Cassie had money getting everywhere. Products of the Great Depression. You open the book up, your floorboard, there was money. Not, not fast enough, but it was that, let's hide the money away while we have it. And she was a random mother. She fed, you know, those 10 cabins. Plus, she'd kick the kids out to a little cottage next door where Morris built his house now. She'd kick them out of their own bedrooms and rent those bedrooms upstairs. So the numbers on the kids' bedroom doors. <laughs> <laughs> she was the entrepreneur, and, and uh, I'm not diminishing anything that it did, but uh, Marina business was not the dominant name on here. Scott, who yes. do you use as an architect? Or do they seem like your designs are pretty unique? Yeah, James Salem at McCroby uh, and McCroby and Associates in Ottawa. And that's, he drew Park Store is where it started. And then we had him draw this and he's drawn the condos as well. And then he drew the John Belmar's place is a building that's next to Park Store, just to the west. And everyone asks us, why did you build another building that didn't look as big as Park Store? Same, same architect. Uh, and that's just Jean Louis' garage. He's got some stuff out there. Mm. Uh, but it's the same architect. Do you have that kind of collector in here? Maybe you want to know <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. so How many boats would you sell a year? Just a, uh, uh, about, we just finished two days of this. Not as many as you'd think. Um, like 85 new units. 85. Around 85 new units and another 100 used. And then we were in the CD business, so that was you know a couple hundred units a year. Um, but it's not, the average price of our units is more than maybe my colleagues that I sat in a room with, you know, they have 70 towboats, master crafts in stock, or, or they might be in the pontoon business and do 100 pontoons, we do, you know, 15. Okay. Um, my question yeah. is, your boats are very high. Yes. Yeah. Probably in, in Canada, we'd be one of three at the level of what we're doing in, in the country. So there's one in BC, and then there's one north of Toronto, uh, and that was Pride Marine. Probably has a bunch of different brands, and they're they're doing some big units, but most of the others are somewhere on that spectrum. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we can ask questions to Scott, to those who are staying for the tour, to walk around. But yep. uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dave. Yep. Uh, okay. Give you a well, Scott, much gratitude not only for the presentation, but the tour, and uh, for hosting us so well in, in a much elevated building. It's, yep. it's just amazing, and uh, much appreciated yep. and recognized. Now there's. Usually at one gift that we give you, we take back, but I have another special gift for you as well. Oh, wow. So I'm going to start with the, the gift that we take back, and we do okay. this in terms of our generosity as we have a book that we give to a library. This particular one's going to, I believe, uh, Maynard. Maynard. Okay. And her name is inscribed in this one. Okay. And uh, so we need it as such. Uh, but uh, the one that you don't know about, and uh, uh, I was doing, it's kind of serendipity, I was working in my coach house yesterday and I came across a photo back from the early 80s mm -hmm. with Jerry and you know what, I mean Jerry and Morris, I knew the three generations quite well, I didn't know the amazing things you're doing here, but this concerns that in that video you've seen a, a building come down, that blue building, well, this is a picture, I was working for the government at the time, Ministry of Industry and Tourism. And we had a program called the Eastern Interior Subsidiary Agreement, which is the federal provincial money giving grants to tourism infrastructure. And one of the grants successful was from Hux Marina. So this picture here, you may have seen it. And uh, this was given, uh, taken where that blue building was, yes. kind of building the grant. But uh, Jerry, having all the contacts, brought uh, this power boat down from Toronto. Bill Taylor had boat in Canada, and uh, we went out to a little uh, Bill Drive, and I had a little uh, handkerchief in here, and I never went on a fast boat. It got sucked out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and Russ was a part of the, uh, the entourage as well, but this uh, was back in, in the early 80s. And I thought, uh, now it's a rough frame, so I don't take the frame now, but uh, 
That's quite an interesting uh, picture. We've got a great spot that this is going to go, as you'll see when we go over there. But uh, Jerry had a lot of contacts. Maybe you didn't know this, but that uh, celebration of life at your place just uh, last summer. I'll tell the story about it. Uh, Jerry had contacts. So he's up, we went up to Toronto to meet Bill Taylor to see whether we can attract the poker run to the Thousand Islands. And this would be back in the early 90s. And again, Jerry had contacts like you wouldn't believe. We went up in, in his red sports car in about two hours from Rockport, from his home up here. <laughs> Bob Russell wasn't the Solicitor General yet, so he'd have to pay the fine if that actually occurred. <laughs> he got back when he was successful, and uh, we got the uh, poker run back, and the first uh, time was at Rockville. But there's so much story and history behind Huck's Marina. Uh, Hal McCarney wrote a film script, and uh, I can't find out where it is. Maybe I promised you that. But it was about the rum running that went on, and he had uh, Ed or Fred Huck in the script associated with selling the fuel to the bootmakers going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Al Capone and all this. And but, uh, it's, it was, uh, you, you should be proud of what the Hucks and uh, your family that you've done so well. And this is something to be very proud of. To the, you know, three in Canada, like at this scale, and uh, you see it growing and growing. So thanks very much. And, uh, Thank you.